This is a deeper dissection of the posterior cranial cervical junction. This is the left occiput, posterior left neck. And for reference, uh, the splenius uh, capitis muscle that has been reflected. This allows us to see the deep suboccipital triangle with the various muscles that form its borders. We have the superior oblique, the inferior oblique, rectus capitis posterior major, and then medial to that, and not really forming part of the triangle, the rectus capitis posterior minor attaching to the posterior arch of C1. This triangle gives us various landmarks for identifying some of the regional nerves. For example, we see the dorsal ramus of C2 as it uh, courses underneath the inferior oblique muscle, and we see branching into a uh, lateral and medial component, the medial component uh, ascending as the greater occipital nerve. Below this, we see the dorsal ramus of the third cervical nerve. Another uh, structure is the occipital artery, which is seen here, uh, coursing up with the greater occipital nerve and coursing deep to the splenius capitis muscle, supplying muscular branches, supplying a cutaneous branch that ascends, and also uh, supplying branches that will anastomose, as uh, seen here and here, with the deeper lying vertebral artery. This is the V3 segment, the third segment of the vertebral artery, as it's just left the transverse foramen of C1 laterally, is coursing in the vertebral artery groove medially, and then will pierce the posterior lano-occipital membrane and dura mater to become the V4 or intracranial part of the vertebral artery. So vertebral artery, and again we see the posterior arch of C1, the relationship of that with the inferior oblique, and then the relationship with the greater occipital nerve. Uh, more medially, we see the semispinalis cervicis muscle, and uh, it attaches onto the spinous process of C2. So its attachment uh, being near the attachment of the rectus capitis posterior major, which then continues on up to the occiput.